guess the best way I can describe Majora's Mask is if Ocarina of Time and LSD Dream Emulator had a bastard alien rape baby of a son. That son's name would be Majora's Mask. So yeah. Huh. Is that it? Is that all the creepy stuff? Seems like I'm forgetting something. On September 7, 2010, a strange story appeared on the internet. A disturbing tale that changed the way we looked at The Legend of Zelda forever. A user by the screen name Jad Usable posted on a 4chan thread detailing his experiences of what he described as a haunted video game cartridge. He claimed that he received the cartridge from an old man. The card itself was missing a label and the word Majora was scribbled on it with a black marker. When asked how much, the old half-blind man replied, free. He said it used to belong to a kid that didn't live here anymore. As Jed Usable left, he thought the old man said goodbye then. But upon re-evaluation, he questioned if he had really said goodbye Ben. Once he got home and started the game, Jad Usable noticed a pre-existing save file. The name on that file was Ben. Not thinking anything of it, he then proceeded to create new save data in slot 2. As he played, he noticed that the game's NPCs would still at times refer to him as Ben. After beating the Woodfall Temple, Jed Usable decided to save his game, restart, and ultimately delete the bin file, hoping to solve the problem. He then tried again, but the NPCs didn't call him anything. There was only a blank space where his name should have been. It wasn't until the next night Jed Usable continued by picking up where he left off. It was at this time he attempted what is known as the fourth day glitch. Basically, it's an exploited glitch where you can gain an extra day's worth of time in-game. It is believed that this, along with the deletion of the Ben save file, were the major catalyst to the strange occurrences that Jad Usable would soon experience. No one would have guessed as to what would happen next. Unless you've read the creepypasta, then you, you probably know. He noticed text displayed incorrectly, textures were missing, and probably the strangest of all, the Song of Healing could be heard being played backwards. Shortly thereafter, he decided to start capturing the gameplay to document his experiences. He began uploading the videos to YouTube as he sought the advice of fellow gamers. I will now play for you, in their entirety, the videos posted on his channel chronicling his strange tale. Stay with me because once they're over, I will conclude the story itself, followed by my thoughts, theories, and opinions on the creepypasta. Typically, I narrate or film reactions to the footage, but this time I want to present to you the full, unedited versions as Jed Usable originally envisioned. This is the Ben Drown Saga.
Watch out!
After the fourth video, Jed Usable's roommate claimed that he had moved out, but before he did, he gave his roommate a flash drive. It contained the final video, free.wmv, in a text document entitled, thetruth.txt. Jed Usable instructed him not to release these videos until September 15, 2010, at 11.04 p.m. The text file was eventually released on Mediafire. He claimed that Ben began to haunt his PC and would try to communicate with him through Cleverbot. He warned that no one should believe anything coming from his YouTube account after the date of September 12, 2010. It wasn't long after Jad Usable's YouTube channel began to eerily change. His profile image turned into an Elegy of Emptiness statue painting, and his new location stated, Now I am everywhere. This concludes the story of the Haunted Majora's Mask cartridge. Overall, Ben Drown has to be one of my favorite all-time creepypastas. I know that might sound strange coming from me, but I really enjoy it. Even though it uses so many of the same tropes used in various video game creepypastas, you must remember that Ben Drowned was one of the first. And not one of the first ever written, but one of the first to break out and reach so many readers. Not just that, but to me personally, the story of Ben has much more substance than your typical creepypasta. For example, a lot of video game creepypastas revolve around a video game character, typically breaking the fourth wall, interacting with a player, to ultimately manifest itself as some type of demonic figure, typically resulting in said player's death. 
Even though that may sound similar to Ben Drown, the story of Ben brings more to the table. Rather than a demonic entity, Ben was actually a boy or young man. Once he died, and I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that he drowned, but once he died, his spirit inhabited his favorite video game. Jed Usable doesn't die at the end of this story, rather mysteriously disappears. Instead of being a video game character breaking the fourth wall, Ben presents himself as the Link statue. And rather than the entity manifesting himself, Ben used technology to free himself through Jad Usable. Typically, in cliche creepypastas, the player's motivations never transcend to the reader. It just doesn't make sense as to why they would continue to play, whereas in this story, Jad Usable comes across as curious or even sympathetic towards Ben. To me, and I may be looking into this too much, but there seems to be an underlining theme to this story. Curiosity killed the cat. Now, I constantly get the question asking me if this creepypasta is real. Before I answer that, I am going to say this right here, right now, and I will not address this again in future videos. Creepypastas are not real. I know that might take a little of the fun or scare factor out of the equation, but I repeat, creepypastas are not real. There have been recent attacks and tragedies all in the name of creepypastas. This is just sad and the flame does not need to be fed. Creepypastas are here for our entertainment. It's just like a scary movie. You know it's not real, but that shouldn't take away from it. The same can be said for both movies and creepypastas. It's the fear that something similar could happen to you. That's what makes it so effective. So no, Ben Drowned is not real. Jad Usable is actually Alex Hall, a writer and filmmaker. The footage posted was a programmed ROM hack and has since become its own game. Alex wrote the story while in college. In my opinion, it was a really clever move to declare not to trust anything posted on his channel after that particular date. It kept the legend alive and made people question the truth. Now, how do I know all of this for certain? Well, I have been fortunate enough to speak with Alex on a number of occasions. He's a real nice guy with a good sense of humor and he enjoys doing charitable work. You could even go as far as saying that we are friends. Lord Mike, uh, the sticky battle. And, um, <laughs> you're a bastard. See? Either way, we're here to celebrate the story of Ben Drown. Jad Usable himself, Alex Hall, arguably wrote the most well-renowned video game creepypasta of all time. You can't help but think that the creepy community wouldn't be what it is today if it weren't first for the Haunted Majora's Mask creepypasta. If anything, let this be inspiration to all up-and-coming horror writers, or any kind of writer for that matter. If you have a good idea, follow through with it. You never know, you might just write the next Ben Drown creepypasta. Between the game's creepy aspects and the Ben Drown creepypasta, I think it is a safe assumption to say that Majora's Mask will forever go down in creepy gaming history. I think that's gonna do it for me today, folks. I'd like to thank the creepy community and picky subscribers for all your support. It means more to me than you know. I'm not above begging for likes and favors, so if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and favorite for more creepy gaming. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and be sure to check out these people.com. Be sure to subscribe to my Mullet Mike channel and follow me on Twitch for some more horror Let's Plays. I think that's going to do it for me today, folks. I want to thank you all so much again. Hi, I'm Mullet Mike with a smile and full screen saying keep sacred. Thanks for watching. Peace.